I think if you are interested in how the business model of Great will look, I think there's going to be a lot of information in here. So if you're interested in business, maybe you're running your own company, I'm sure that at least at some points, there are going to be golden nuggets of how you can do things differently in an organization in a way that does a lot of good, in a way that allows the people in the organization to experience good emotions and love, love their work. All right, let's go then. Eric, how are you this morning? <sighs> we just had an amazing warm up, so I've left the steel armor behind me that I felt this morning and getting back into it. We have, Feeling we good. have, we've been shaking our bodies, we've been all properly warmed up. But still, it's early morning, so I don't want to overwhelm you with any too challenging questions. So, um, what is the meaning of life, Eric? <laughs> no, but that's easy. The meaning of life is growth. Growth one huh? way or another. And growing together with your community. So, it, it, thanks for that easy question. What would you say is the meaning of life, my dear friend? <laughs> that was a quick answer. And I know one of your favorite things to do, and for... For the one listening, Eric had talked about this before. You, <clears throat> you love building stuff. It's one of your favorite things to do. So before I answer the question you gave back to me, so would you say then that growing a company like Great is something that is one of the more meaningful things you can do with your life? Yes, I truly believe. I think that it combines the two. So I love building things. And that comes from a pure energy of passion. It's the energy of a child playing. Like mm. There is no real purpose with it other than the passion of doing so. <clears throat> so that comes from one end. And then all the meaning comes from the other end of actually accomplishing something that makes life better for the people around the project. So mm. both involved in the inner circle of the project, like you and I talking about it, and also just the next circle would push be your family and your friends who are affected by how you feel. <clears throat> Sorry. And then all the people we want to affect with the project outside of the inner circle. So yeah, I believe it's one of the most meaningful thing I can do. Cool. So <clears throat> in today's, uh, today's podcast, take some time, Eric, take some water. I'll talk for a little while. <laughs> I tried to so, mute the microphone, but apparently fa- Ah, man. Cool. So in, uh, Today's uh, podcast, we're going to talk about what kind of vision you see for great and what is the most meaningful project you can build. And I think those three circles you described right now, I would love to take some more time to go a bit deeper into each one of them as we go on. But so I guess you want to build something then that is as meaningful as possible for you. So what would you say is the grand objective with an organization like great? Our grand objective is to do as much good as we possibly can. So we want to have the most positive effect on the most possible number of living beings, plants, <clears throat> animals, humans, you name it. So we want to see the most positive effect we can possibly see. That's kind of the end goal with everything. Cool. I want to go into a challenging question here because I don't know the answer to this one. And that is that. I'm also of the opinion that I, w I would like to do as much good as possible. And I, in a perfect world, I would like to treat someone that lives in a country I've never been in, in maybe Africa, equally to someone that is my neighbor here in Sweden. But I'm not quite there morally yet. So let me guess now that you would prefer helping your girlfriend more than your family, more than some random person in Sweden, more than someone in a distant country, more than an animal. So what is your perspective on that? Is everyone equal for you? Oh, of course not. The animal is worth more than my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Don't tell her that. Uh, no, I, I think that's it, it makes perfect sense. Uh, in, in a completely rational world, a life is a life. Uh, my world isn't completely rational. I doubt that your world is completely rational. Mm -hmm. So in an in emotional world, then it's completely rational to prioritize your girlfriend over an animal you've never met. So I believe that the challenge is to find the balance between these two. 
how do you do enough for the people far, far away from you and at the same time stay emotionally engaged? And I believe that if we take the extreme example, person I've never met in a country far, far away versus my girlfriend, who I spend every day with, uh, every night with. If we can even take this into a, well, a completely rational decision. If I would not give her my full attention, if I would not make sure that she survived first, I would not be able to emotionally, physically or whatever, help someone else because I would be in deep shit. So the first thing I would need to make sure is taken care of is myself. And the reason for that is if I'm not in shape, if I'm not happy, if I'm not healthy, if I'm not feeling well, I cannot help anyone else. Mm. It's the same reason on the airplane, they tell you to <coughs> help yourself before you help your kids. Because if you, if you don't help yourself first, you're not gonna help anyone else. Mm. So, yeah. It, that makes a lot of sense. So then you describe it as circles, which I think is a good metaphor to describe this. So you want great to do as much good as possible for different circles in your life. And I guess beginning with the most inner circle, which would be you. What yes. is your vision for how great will shape the course of your life? I get goosebumps from that question. That's a good sign. <laughs> I was pretty proud of that question. Yeah. I'm going to take a proud pose if you're watching this on camera. <sighs> Oh, you look so proud. proud. We, my, my brother usually tells you that your nose is shining if you're looking too proud. It's like, oh, your <laughs> nose is shining. You're Rudolph. So yeah, <laughs> right now Emil is Rudolph. Okay, so to start with looking at this from a, from a circle perspective, which is not a metaphor I've been thinking about before. It just came to me when we started talking. So let's see if this makes sense. The absolute first inner circle is just me. So... For to be able to get to any other circle outside of this, I need to start with me. And for me, great will be a purpose. It will be a reason for me to get out of bed. It would give my life meaning. That's one of the most important things. It will also give me uh, personal growth and education. I will be inspired to be around you and other people like you, who I learn from, who I learn together with. And I will get energy from teaching you guys things that I feel are valuable. I will <coughs> hopefully inspire a lot of people outside of that in various ways. And this will then internally give my life meaning. It will give me health in a way because I will feel inspired to take care of myself. I want great to be a place where I still have the time to focus on training. I want to make sure that I always have time to sleep. Uh, with great and not going to bed with all these chaos and ideas in my head that I've done previously in businesses. So to me, it's it's important that I will be able to maintain a perfect health kind of through this. Because if I don't do that, then nothing else works. So that's the absolute most inner circle. What's the most inner circle for you in this? Cool. I think this seg segues nicely into the second circle, which would be the people working around you, which would be ha, me. And, <laughs> that guy. And I think what you personally want becomes really important for me as someone working with you. Because to me, one of the things that is, um, is what, what I like the most about Great is that there is a priority that the employees should feel good, shouldn't be overworked, shouldn't be stressed, that there should be an opportunity to be very flexible, to be able to work when you want, from where you want, and to have, yeah, I think that core value that the employees should like working at this company, should feel good here, should want to be here for a really good long time. I think that's one of the main reasons why I am very interested in this project. And to me, then it becomes so much easier to relax in that if you as the most inner circle of the company is doing that first and showing how that is a priority. So would you elaborate on why you think this is important in a long term perspective for the second circle? People <clears throat> working around. So let, let's, let's go back in time for a bit. I'm working with uh, with my previous business, Katina Media. 
and the year is 2050. I'm at uh, an entrepreneurship event with, um, with, um, for young entrepreneurs in Sweden. And we're sitting in circles. We're supposed to discuss our problems in our company. And we start talking about everyone else's problems and with that, that's fine. And then I get a question, what's, what's bothering you, Eric? I'm trying to answer and I physically can't. I just start crying. I breathe for a bit, we talk about some other things and then I get another question and I physically can't answer it. I'm trying to. The, the words just won't come out. It's like stuck in my throat. I can't even talk about my problems. And this was the shape I was in during my last, well, during the most intense year uh, of, of Katina. And just realizing what that meant, seeing what that did to me, seeing what that did to the people around me. When my parents called me and asked, how are you? And I answered that with like, really bad mom but I don't want to talk about it and just thinking back and how did that feel for her to hear having no way to help me and just feeling that I don't ever want to be in that situation ever again and I don't ever want to put anyone else in that situation or be the person around someone in that situation so the core from in this comes from having experienced that and feeling like, whoa, that's not good. That's really not good. So then I've asked myself, what's the opposite of that? And how can we build something that is the opposite of that? Mm. What would you say? What's the opposite of that? What do you need to be perfectly healthy? For now, the only thing that comes to mind is I imagine you sitting in that circle and did you feel like a role model at that point? Or how did you f did you think about at that point how your experience affected those around you? Uh, yes and no. Um, I considered myself to be a role model with the concept leading by doing and to me that meant working really hard and making it seem like I maybe worked even harder than I did mm. so be very early in the office leave very late uh, making sure people saw that uh, to kind of inspire the troops in a sense and what I realized thinking back on it is that it's probably more adding peer pressure to anyone who's under delivered to make them feel like they have to be in the office that much because the manager is. Mm. So I believe I, I acted like a role model out of what I thought was a good thing. I thought it was good to work that hard. I thought that that was the way to do things. And I realized that I was probably a role model for a very shitty behavior uh, or a very self-destructive behavior. And I've seen, so Emil, who I founded the company with, uh, not Emil in this podcast, but my other friend Emil, he got completely burned out uh, during this last year. And I think that we were in equally bad shape. But what happened was that he was in charge of a project that I wasn't quite that involved with. And that project burned. It went sh really shitty. It completely crashed. And I think that he took that personally, so he went down with it. When luckily my projects didn't fail, and if they would have failed, I think that would have been what pushed me off the cliff. And yeah, I, I just, no one should go through that. And I, I believe that one reason that he did it was that I was pushing myself and pushing him to put ourselves in situations that we couldn't handle. So I was a role model, but not in the good way of the word, rather the bad way. Mm. What was it like? I mean, during that time, I think when I imagine, you know, building a company like you did, that you would have very intense, very challenging moments, but that most time would be fun. But so you're saying that you, you had these problems for a long time and that you were constantly feeling 
how much how much of the time when you built Katina, how much of that time did you enjoy compared to how much of that time did you suffer? My mother told me once that, well, she told me lots of times that she was worried that I would get burned out. And I told you, you don't need to worry, mom. I'm not going to get burned out. I'm having so much fun. And her answer was, that's exactly why I'm worried. If you wouldn't have fun, you would find excuses. Then you would rest. So I believe that I thought most of this was fun. I had fun most of the time, but that doesn't mean that I wasn't suffering. It doesn't mean that I didn't push myself too hard. It's like if you're in a, if you're playing a game of uh, some racket sport, whatever it is that you enjoy, and when you are the most tired, you're still having a lot of fun, but you keep pushing yourself. Mm -hmm. And then imagine that you're playing that last set, but it goes on for a year. It's probably fun in a way, but it's way more than you can handle. At least it's way more than I could handle. See, it, it was fun most of the time, but it was I could. That's not the same thing as me handling it well. So it's like using a credit card for many, many years. Yeah, it's fun to use the credit card. Yeah, it is fun. <laughs> you you realized that it was was a lot of fun for you personally building this company, but what was lacking was that element of being able to restore yourself to be able to get rest to be able to also have the health both physically physically and emotionally so how does that to go back to the original question how will that change things that you will arrange great for you and for the people in the second circle the people working at great what will be different this time yeah so let's go back to my question to you there as well then what what would be the opposite of this how do you create an organization where where this will never happen First word that comes to mind to me is uh, flexibility. At least I work that way. Maybe not all people work that way, but I, I have a high, naturally high work ethic and I want to work like all day, every day at some periods. But then if I get too tired or maybe something traumatic happens in my life, then it's, I would like to be able to work less for a period. Or have the flexibility to take a vacation or a day off. And if that happens, if there is that flexibility, I think I at least feel safe that I won't go too far. I, yeah, I'm not yeah. sure if I would trust myself in an eight to, I mean, nine to five environment. Yeah. And but I haven't experienced that though, but still. Uh, what, what you're touching upon there. Uh, I think is key. So flexibility is, is key. And also with like eight to five, nine to five kind of thing. One of the challenging things with that and one of the things that I've been a big ambassador of is that it's cool to work a lot. It's cool to push yourself. It's cool to... I've been bragging about the, um, the number of hours I've been putting in and looking back at that now it's like hey eric what the fuck grow up man <laughs> but it, i did that and i was a part of a community that did that and that's still a big community people that are proud of how they are pushing themselves and proud of not taking flexibility if you put it that way but i completely agree with you flexibility is, is one of the most important things in this what else would you say matters To me, it's clear from the way we arrange things that we value that people in the organizations feel good and we value to avoid doing things that make people feel bad. The checking process is a great example of this. And I think with processes like that and for the one listening, each time we start a meeting, we check in and we say just unfiltered how we feel. So if I'm feeling at, I'm at 40% today, my life is a mess, I'm struggling in relationships, whatever it could be, that it's okay to say that. And then other people in the organization have an opportunity to reach out. So it feels like we take care of each other. 
And that's kind of the environment I would like to spend a lot of time with. I would like to spend a lot of my time around people that cares. Is there something you would like to add to that? I mean, this comes from, so th this, this is a core value uh, of the organization and it's a core value of myself. And it ties into two main words, I would say here, which are very similar in a sense. And it's the first one being vulnerability. We want to be in a vulnerable organization where people can be vulnerable. And the second one that is honesty, which is similar in many ways when you're talking about yourself. If you're being vulnerable, you're most of the time being honest. Um, so being in a vulnerable organization, and with that, that doesn't mean that it can get penetrated from the outside in a vulnerable way, but we're, we're openly vulnerable t with each other. That means that we're honest, we're pure, we're there for each other, but we also give other people the opportunity of being there for us. <clears throat> I think that's one of the main challenges with any relationship, friendship, love relationships or work relationships, is that if, if I'm not vulnerable, if I don't dare to tell someone that I'm in pain, it's very hard for anyone to help me. But by encouraging these checking process and once again then leading by example in a sense, if I'm opening up saying I feel really shitty, my love life is a mess, I can't eat, whatever it might be, then everyone else feels safer to do the same thing. At least that's what I believe. So that's something that we want to encourage in the organization. And that's something that we're doing publicly in the check-in process like this, because we want to inspire other organizations to do similar things. Mm. Yeah, for me, it feels, I feel safe working in an organization like that. I feel working in another way would feel kind of hard and tense. Again, I haven't experienced it. I would like to switch. Are you, do you want to? Yeah, say I'll, something I'll add I something to that. Yes, because the word safe really resonates with me. And I was in a podcast yesterday and I got the very interesting question. So, Eric, looking back at the last decade of doing business, what's the main feeling you have within you? And I was shocked by that question because we haven't really been talking about anything about emotions. So it was like, I wasn't in that state. So I had to go into that state a bit. So I sat with the question for a few seconds. The main answer that came up within me was fear. That was actually the main feeling that I've had all this time. And it struck me then, I think that a part of that comes from fear of not delivering on targets, fear of letting uh, investors uh, be, make them disappointed, fear of letting go of an employee, that fear of dealing with all these people and making them feeling bad. And one part of it is pushing myself out of my comfort zone. And I think that the comfort zone part is good. You need to push yourself out of there. And there's always going to be some fear with other things. But if the core feeling, as you're mentioning now, is to feel safe, I think that you will dare to go outside of your comfort zone a lot more. You will dare to deliver on these things. You will dare to do these things. But you will always be able to come back to a safe place. And looking back then now during my life with, uh, with previous businesses, I haven't had that core feeling. So being able to, well, if you feel that way, and I've never even communicated those words before because I haven't thought about it in this way, that makes this so powerful. So we want everyone in this team to feel safe. And at a bigger picture, if we go out to the outmost circle of whatever we will get to, we want those to feel safe too. I think that's the most primal and important feeling that a person can have, or an animal for that matter feel safe cool so for you you want to be able to live a life where you can you as the inner circle you want to be able to live a life where you feel safe where you feel like you're learning where you can have mostly good emotions and where you can be healthy and you want the similar things for the people in the second circle 
So now I would like to switch gear a bit and talk about <clears throat> the next circle, which I see as the the customers. I'm not sure if that is the right word, but the people that will be using our services. And we have different kinds of services. And um, so those services to me are sort of the personal development part of the site. We have a um, affiliation part of the site and we have a charity part of the site. So if you s would like to elaborate on the vision for each of these parts and what the person using them, what you see that the value could be for them, would that work? Sure. I'll just like to add one thing with regards to, to the circles. So if the innermost circle would be me, uh, the second circle would be the team and everyone working in grades. I would say that the third circle is our families and our closest friends because I believe that they are so impacted by how we feel, especially our, our families. <clears throat> so mm -hmm. if you have a wife and kids and you come home and you from a workplace where you feel safe, I believe that you will provide a safe environment. If you come home from a workplace where you feel scared and overly stressed, I believe that that's what you're going to give your family. So I think that that third circle is a very, very important layer where we impact twice as many, if not 20 times as many people as we're actually in the organization just by being here. Yeah. So I think that's, that's worth, that, that's one circle that's in between us. and That, the, is, that is a very valid point. Like yesterday, for example, I invited six friends over. I cooked them all dinner and we watched the Champions League together. And if I would have been worked so hard that I was under 20% life force, I would not have made that dinner for them. And then the fact that I'm overworked is affecting the evening for all those six people. Yes. So I think that's very valuable. Um, and and take, the, take the conversations that I used to have with my mother about how I was feeling. Imagine that your mother also calls you and how it's going to affect her day. If you're answering, I'm so stressed out, I'm feeling like shit, I don't know what to do. Or I'm so energized, I'm feeling so good, I'm so proud of what I'm doing, mother. This mm. is oh, the best time of my life. Mm. Just the effect that has on a mother. Or yeah. then the people around your mother, how she's going to feel thanks to this. Yeah. And so that we can have space to focus on, on the people that we love too. Because she might be yeah. having problems. Exactly. There is... There's so many circles around each of these circles that I think I it's, it's okay. Cool. Yeah, so ripple effects. Thir are. Third circle is family, and uh, yeah, maybe sort of the closest community around great as well. People we yeah. might affect. Friends and but family. Very. I, I agree. But but let's switch to the next circle then, which would be um, the people that use our product. How yeah, do you see okay, that so you that... could do good for them if we start with um, start with the content part? Like. Okay, so I'll, I'll do a very quick overview of these different sections yes. and we'll start there and you can ask me where to go. So as of great today, we will have four different parts, which could be seen as four completely different projects, but they will all be on great.com. So the first one is what we're developing right now. That's great.com uh, slash organization or whatever we're going to call it. That's what we're doing now with these calls, how we share our community thoughts, how we share our values, how we share our checking processes with the idea to do the most possible good for other organizations out there and their teams and their circles. And that's the only part we're delivering right now. Then we have the commercial side of the business. That's going to be product focused, focused on making money in various ways. And we want to do that by creating a long term product that will do the most possible good over time, where we never take any shortcuts to have something out as fast as possible or make money today rather than in a year. So we want to make sure that the, the visitor and the customer is in the first place rather than making short-term decisions. So that's how that part will do the most possible good. And then we have the charity sake service where we will want to help charity organizations to make it clearer what their purpose are and how to donate money to them, but also make it easier for a visitor who wants to donate money to understand the differences between various courses and how those different courses can, 
how you can take the philosophical decision of helping uh, children or adults or animals or whatever it is to guide people through that. So that's going to be a completely set, uh, <coughs> different circle. Well, different part of this. And then we want to have one which is based on educational content in a sense, where we want to create so much content about everything we think is important or everything we believe can do a lot of good and not do it in a commercial way at all. There will not be any ads, not any clickbait articles or whatnot. Just gonna be guides made by the best people we can find of how to sleep better, how to communicate in your relationship, how to eat healthily, uh, how to meditate, whatever it can be that we can come up with. Think the best articles there is on Wikipedia, but in a guide format rather than in a just, yeah, Wikipedia structure. Cool. Awesome. Now we have a very clear overview. So are, are you ready for some inception? Go. All right. Minute podcast in the minute podcast. And I'll frame this so that Frederick can cut it out later. So Eric, if you would explain what is the value you see great giving to other organizations? And I'll do it very, I'll do it like this. If you could pick the three most important things that you would like to inspire other organizations to do, what would those things be? Okay, so one of the main parts of great.com will be about organizations. And we want to challenge the way that we see is very common among organizations right now, how they are built up and why they're built that way. And we don't know what's the perfect way of doing this, so we will be a live experiment. So there will be a lot of things we will do differently. And to name a few then, I believe the first and foremost, we will uh, be very transparent. I think that's one thing that could be applied in one way or another to all organizations. So that's something we want to inspire people that be more transparent with what's happening, what's going on, what are people being uh, paid, etc. So this is one of the main things that we will be talking about and believing in. To clarify for the one listening, we have two episodes, if you go back a bit, where we explore transparency, both as an organization and for individuals. But if you would summarize the benefit of being transparent, just very shortly in one or two sentences, what would you say? To me, transparency, tra transparency is honesty. And I think that all relationships benefit from honesty. It's, it's the same thing to me. Awesome. Second one ties into transparency and it's with vulnerability that create company cultures where people actually share how they're feeling. And that goes from senior management to uh, very junior employees that a CEO can tell people that I'm feeling shit today and that's fine. So there will be more friendship in the, in the workplace rather than competition. So whatever then can be done with that and we will be the live experiment of how we do that. So that's something that I hope and would love to inspire other organizations to do. So that's the second one. The third one being meaning and purpose. So for great, we will do the most possible good we can do. For most organizations, it doesn't make sense to have that purpose because most organizations have the main idea to make money. But I believe that all organizations would benefit from having a meaning part of it, not just a CSR thing. Uh, so company social responsibility that's meant for to please investors have something in place that's meant to have, please the souls of the team. What do they care about? Can every organization provide some nurturing for their community or for our people in countries far, far away that are sick? We want to do it with everything we do. And we also want to tell the world about how we do that and why we do that. And I'd love to see more organizations thinking about this and doing this uh, in whatever way possible for them. 
So yeah, that's three of the main things. Awesome. And one thing I would like to add to the meaning part is that Great is an organization that will give away 100% of its profits. Yes. And to me, when it comes to organizations, that's one of the main things where I think Great can live by example. And I think if we can inspire other organizations to have a similar business model, that would be one of the most valuable things that we could do, I think. Yeah, I share that vision. Cool. So let's wrap up then the organization part and talk about... Right, let's start with the um, product then. Cool. All right. So, Eric, for the product part of Great, would you explain what your vision is for that? How you see that that would value be valuable for the customers? Yes. So the product part uh, of great.com will serve the higher purpose. Uh, the higher purpose being doing the most possible good. So that's like the end part of this. And we believe that one of the ways of doing the most possible good is giving away as much money as possible. To do that, we need to make as much money as possible. So the commercial side of the business will be focused on making as much money as possible. But Can I ask you, would you be able to clarify why making as much money as possible is the most good you can do from your perspective? So we believe that giving money away is one of the easiest ways of really making a difference. With a hundred dollars in Malawi or some other country with extreme poverty, it makes so, so much more difference than you can do with $100 in Sweden, for example. So if we can make money from customers in Sweden and we can give that money away uh, to a family in Malawi, it will be such a big impact of what they can do with that money compared to what you can do with it in Sweden. Cool. So you're saying that an advantage with money is that it's very flexible and it can be directed to where it's needed a lot. Exactly. So it's very, it's very tangible. It's very flexible, and it can make quite little money. Can make an extreme impact for the people that suffer from poverty in the poorest countries in the world. So it's it's quite easy to flex and do this and change it. So yeah, that's now. We, if we want to give away the most possible money, we need to make the most possible money. And I believe that the best way to make the most possible money is to create the product over a long period of time that clients really, really want. And this is another challenge for most organizations out there. Uh, it's very common that you work on a target that's three months into the future and maybe a year into the future because you need to please, a company needs to please their investors, company needs to please whatever staff bonuses there might be. There, there are all of these targets uh, that should be met in a short term. We want to do something that's just focusing on the long term. We want to make those decisions because this is a life project of ours. We don't want to have targets three months into the future. We don't want to make decisions based on three months, which means that we can focus solely on what's actually good for the end user, which means that the end user will keep coming back to what we're doing and keep coming back and keep coming back, keep coming back because we are focused on them. So the first product we will do will be about casino. The reason for that is that if we want to make the biggest impact, we believe that a good place to start is where I already have a lot of knowledge. I've been doing this. I know this. It will make it a lot faster to get started to actually get to this point. I would much rather do it in some other place for ethical reasons. Would I much rather build a company around something else? At the same time, I believe that this is where I can make the biggest impact and the purpose of giving money away is more important to me than anything else. So by creating the best casino product would be to actually focus on what are these casinos doing well for their players, not who has the coolest feature or who is the best at marketing, which is very common and where we're, who offers the most bonuses but actually who treats the people the best, who has the best customer support, who does, makes the fastest uh, payment and withdrawals, who charges the least. 
and really getting this data out there, even though it might not be the most beneficial for us as a company in the short term. So previously we have worked who pays us the most will get the most exposure. Not necessarily who is the best for the player, but who pays us the most. Here for great it will be who gives the player the best experience. And we really want to focus on that, which short term is a quite bad decision because that will mean that we will not maximize our, maximize our profits. But long term, I believe that the visitors will then keep coming back and keep coming back and keep coming back. So it's a long term game. And combining that with having visitors knowing that whatever profits we generate will be given away. I believe also gives them a certain meaning of using our services rather than any other services and feel better about uh, the entire journey. Cool. So what you're saying is right now you are creating a product that would be as good as possible for the user and that we have a system where all the profits will be given away. But can you guarantee that great won't be taking in investors that have other objectives in the future? Can you guarantee that you won't sell the company in 10 years to someone who will use this as a machine for making money? Yes, and, by, can, and in that way, misleading people. Yes, I can guarantee that. And the, the main guarantee about that is that all our recruitment, all our team building, everything around that will be based on the fact that we will give everything away. So if we suddenly change that and sold the company, I don't believe that anyone would keep working for that company. And if, if you're buying a company and all the staff leaves day one in protest, you've basically bought an empty shell. That's not going to be worth much. So it's going to be unsellable. It's most likely going to be owned by somewhat of a foundation rather than a company. So it's going to be unsellable for legal reasons as well. But I believe that there, there are always ways to wiggle the law if you have good enough lawyers. But there are not ways to wiggle the entire staff who has bought into this idea with a commitment of making a change and then you're fooling them straight out there. So that's never going to happen and it wouldn't be able to happen. Cool. So do you have anything more to add on the product before we move on? Yes, uh, one thing is that we're going to start with with Casino, uh, but we don't know, it's not going to be the only product in the long term. So the idea is basically to create very good guides about everything that can be bought in the long term. Uh, if that's insurances, if that's traveling, whatever that is, all the time with the goal of what's the best for the user today and for the next decades. How can we always keep those in mind rather than the, the short term gains? Mm. Is the product really good for the user though? Because I've read this fact somewhere. I'm not sure if it's true, but I read that most of the money a casino make comes from VIP users, which are then users that have gambling problems. Yeah, that's true. Um, I don't know the number. It differs from know the number casino either. and country, but more or less 90% of the profits comes from 10% of the players. That's roughly. And it's like that in, in most businesses, that most money comes from a couple of big customers rather than a lot of small ones. And it's a tricky ethical dilemma. What we want to do is to make sure that we have a lot of our doing good with a product like this will come from helping those kinds of people. People in problem. We want to have... Uh, free live cam sessions with psychotherapists or psychologists that can help them. We want to have projects, products that can limit gambling in all kinds of ways that you by just blocking yourself at our site, you can get blocked in many sites. And we want to have a community where you can speak to other gambling addicted people. And this is a big part of our, uh, our doing good, doing the most possible good on this side of the business to take the most responsibility we can for for these and lead by example there as well. There are a couple of products like this out there, but they all have this financial part of it that we're not going to have. So it makes it easier for us. Do you think that will kill your own business? Or are you going to be serious about a product like that? To yes. really want to help people as much as possible? It's going to kill uh, parts of our business. Uh, that's kind of the end goal, uh, kill parts of our business, kill, if we can, 
eliminate the unhealthy part of the gambling industry, that would be amazing. Even if it means that we're limiting our own profits, even if it means that we're limiting what we can help others with, with those profits, because we don't want to make the money from the people who can't pay the bills. So we will, we will limit our own opportunity by doing so. And I think it's worth it because most people who gamble out there are gambling for healthy reasons, for entertainment. They buy lottery tickets, they play bingo, they bet on the last Manchester United game and they don't bet more than they can afford. And those are the people we want as customers, not the ones that are spending more money so they can't pay rent. Cool. I'm sure we'll dig deeper into this topic at one point, but I would like to move on from here unless you have something final to say. Yeah, so we fine. can cover on. all the circles. Cool. So then I would like to talk about the leg. So Eric, you see a part of our site being about personal development, about how a person can grow into the greatest version of themselves. How is that part of the great.com domain going to look like? So this comes, comes back to, to myself, I would say. I'm, I'm a very curious person. I want to learn, I want to grow. And I think that it's hard to grow in a lot of topics online. It's hard to differentiate what's good, what's bad, what's actually sponsored content, what's content with some other subtext you can't really see and should benefit someone. And I believe that education is one of the most powerful things you can do to change things. So we want to have a part of the site which is solely focused on educating thing, people on things that can help their lives. And in a way where it's as trustworthy as it possibly can be online because there's not gonna be any ads, there's not gonna be anything like that on that part of the site. We will have only commercial things on the commercial sector. sector and nothing on the other side, even if we have a lot of traffic there. And focus that part then on, for example, having the most respected sleep uh, experts writing a guide on how do you sleep better? What is it that you need to think about? What is it that you can do for tricks? How can you change this? And having that put out there same thing for how do you communicate in a relationship which is something that's very close to my heart because i've had a lot of struggles with that in my own relationship so what can you do to teach um teach someone to do this basically all the things that i believe are important uh, we believe are important in life but it's not taught in school I never got to t uh, got taught how do i communicate uh, with my fiance in school which is very important in life. I never got taught how to sleep, which is very important. I never got taught what to think about if you're having a credit card. How does interest affect these things? And it's hard to find these kind of informations online that's not biased. How to break up with someone. The most difficult things ever. Some... Yeah, I mean, yeah. how that's something that crushes people. That's Breakup is a great example. Probably, and now I'm just guessing, but probably one of the main reasons for suicide is breakups. And that's just a guess that makes sense in my head. And still, we're not even taught how to think about these things. And I don't think you can even find if you're Googling for it. And that's just another guess. You're probably going to find uh, a guide from Cosmopolitan or something like that on how to break up. There's not going to be a, a good study and really good, valuable tips. It's going to mm. be someone who realized there's a lot of people looking for this. Let's make money from them. Mm. So how is this part of the site going to positively affect the rest of the business model? Is it going to drive traffic to those other sites? Is it going to increase our great SEO power? What is the main benefit of that part going to be? So the main benefit is going to be to help people. The main commercial benefit is going to be part of building the great brand. So when people think about trustworthy and good products, they will think about the great brand and go to our commercial sections if they're looking for commercial things. Part of it is going to be uh, with regards to SEO, which is basically the science of ranking high up in Google. 
a big part of that is trustworthiness. So the more trustworthy they are, the higher Google is going to put your website, which means that when someone is looking for something commercial, they're going to find our site. Would you like to explain that? Because I didn't understand the trustworthy part. So one part of the trust that Google is looking at are the number of links pointing towards something and the size of the site linking to you. So if we have a, a guide about sleeping, for example, and then a bunch of universities link to this site because it's supposed to help uh, students sleep better and that's very important to the university. This is very, very powerful links coming to you. Very, very powerful votes. If you get a vote from a university, that's much stronger than getting a vote from uh, someone's horse blog or whatever. How is a link a vote? So Google reads the internet all the time. They have uh, programs that read every single website on the internet. And what they, one of the things that they do is that they count all the links and every link is a vote in, in the Google algorithm. And the more links, the more votes a website has gotten to it from other places. So for example, this university would have gotten a lot of links from other places while a horse blog might have gotten a lot less most of the time. Then the link going out from the university somewhere is going to count a lot of the votes that they got there. So basically it's power being filtered through these layers. So if we can attract a lot of those high quality links from universities, from governments, from whatever it might be, that will then benefit the entire part of great to be a much more trustworthy site and Google would consider it to be one of the top ones in different search keywords. And do you mainly want to rank high up on keywords that are, are related to casino or which, which keywords are getting more rank depending on where the links go? So first and foremost, the power goes to the, to the page where the link goes to. Mm -hmm. So if, if the link goes to the sleeping section, the sleeping section is the one that will get the most power. And However, then you can the, redirect that. Yeah, part of the power spills out. So even the casino section will benefit from links to the sleeping part or whatever other commercial side we have of this business. If we do insurances, if we do whatever. That's why if you look for anything, Wikipedia is very likely to come out on top. Even if there are no links to that specific thing that you looked for, maybe you're looking for a specific kind of tomatoes or whatever. That's probably no one has linked to. But so many people have linked to other sections of Wikipedia that the tomato section goes up as well. Mm. All right, cool. So, um, Could you kind of reteach me this to see if, if this made sense to a listener? Yeah. I just had a question in mind that I wanted to ask. Mm, and then I interrupted you. <sighs> okay, so. We played around, me and Eric, yesterday. How can we explain SEO in a very simple way? What did we learn? Nothing. <laughs> okay. We Teach caught. Back. <laughs> Teach back. So, in great, we want to create a lot of good, good material that would benefit the users. And if a user is benefited by it, they might link to us, which is the same thing as they voting for us. They're saying what great did is good. We vote for them as president. And the more votes we get, the higher up we get on Google for different keywords. And I assume that the main presume that the main keywords we want to rank for then is keywords that makes us money, which would be keywords in casino. Well, it will be both. We really want to rank for the sleeping keywords as well, but not okay. from a commercial aspect, just because we want people to sleep better. So mm -hmm. we would much rather have our own content, which will be so quality focused going on top than anything else. Cool. And this was my questions because we're obviously competing with other different kinds of casino affiliations out there. So they are not creating content about how to sleep good. They're creating content about casino, I assume. So how will our ability to get votes be different from other business models when it comes to casino affiliation? 
so hopefully people will link to our casino product just because it will be the most the best casino product that will also give back money hopefully we'll generate a lot of links from newspapers from from casinos themselves because we are a partner that gives away 100 percent of our profits so hopefully already there we will get a lot of extra links and extra exposure uh, other than that those sections would be fairly similar in competition but since we have all of these different assets that can get links from all other kinds and that power will spill over to the first to the commercial side we can then benefit in ranking there as well so there are lots of different things and mm. one of the things that google focusing a lot about is uh, what the words for that in english relevance so how much of this website is about casino so if we have two websites one is only about casino one is about casino and a lot of other stuff then it's a lot harder to rank on the casino uh, keyword because uh, google is easier to tell what that's about so parts of what we're doing will also be a big um, disadvantage for us because it will be harder to google to understand what this is about but if we go back to the example of wikipedia Wikipedia is not about anything, and at the same time it's about everything, and still you will find it on more or less every keyword you will look for. So we're going more for the Wikipedia approach than the casino affiliation approach, which means, once again, it will be a much longer game. It takes a long time to build something like Wikipedia, mm -hmm. but if you do it, and if you manage to, then you have immense power. Mm. Cool. Cool. Uh, I, I want to move on now, so we make sure we cover all the circles in one place. So I'll segue this like this. First of all, do you think Great will ever create its own casino? And do you see gambling to a company that gives away all of its profits somehow being a future way of giving to charity, where you have the option of winning as well? I don't think that we will ever do a casino. Um, I'm not sure. I don't. I, I have a hard time seeing it. Reason being that it's a very, very different business from doing marketing and from doing content. So to be good at running a casino, you need to be good at customer support. You need to be good at uh, developing games. You need to be good at integrating a lot of payment methods. There, you need to be good at VIP services and these kind of things. You need to be good at events. There are a lot of very, very different things in running a casino, even though we would have some advantage of having the traffic of giving away 100% of the profit. But it's actually a lot easier for us to create a good uh, section about insurances than it would be about for us to create a great casino, because mm. it's more similar to create an information based product about insurances than it is to create a casino even though it doesn't sound like that, since we have all the traffic, we have all the information, we're missing out on a lot of things. Mm. And if our end goal is to create the best possible product out there, we want to beat all the other uh, competitors in how good our product is. For us to be the best possible casino, it's going to be really hard because we're focusing on so many other things. For us to be the best information about casino, that's doable because that's our main and only focus. And that is where you have the experience too. Exactly. Cool. But to move on to the last part. So Eric, the fourth part of great would be about charity. Would you explain how that aspect of the site would look? Yes. So the fourth part of great will be about charity. And it's based on whenever I talk to friends, whenever I talk to people and I ask them what's what's they thought about charity is what is the biggest problem with charity a very common answer that i get is that i don't know where the money is going there might be too much overhead so cost paint money is going to different things uh, i've read so much shit in the news i don't know how to donate because the setups is tricky and all of these different questions pop up. And they, a lot of people don't trust charities uh, because of what they read in the news. So first and foremost, we want to help to build trust around charities. 
how can you trust a charity and which charities can be trusted? So we want to help the ones that are super trustworthy, that are transparent with their mistakes, that have proven results for a long time, they've done very, very good things to get more exposure, to be able to receive more funds. And also then for the visitor who wants to donate money, make it easier for them to find the most trustworthy and the quote unquote best organizations. So that will be the first kind of thing, solving that. How can we take the data that's available out there and make it easily accessible for anyone who wants to see uh, charities? And there are, for example, givewell.com.org that does this right now, but on a fairly small scale. And we want to do the same thing, but with a bigger user-friendly uh, approach. We also like to make it easy for, to make the decisions of charity. So let's say you want to donate money, but you don't really know to what or why or how. So you can come to our website and we will give you some basic questions that help you understand what it is that matter the most to you. So maybe the first question will be, would you like to help uh, humans or animals? It's like the only question you need, what, what's the most important thing for you? Some people will show animals, some people will show humans. Let's say we go through the, the section of humans, okay? Then the second question could be, would you like to help uh, adults or children? And then you maybe take children. And then it can be, would you like to help children in, uh, would you like to save the most possible lives or would you like to extend the length, length of lives? Going down this channel. And at the end of it, it will then be, let's say you care the most about saving animal lives from diseases. You feel that like that's actually what I care the most about. Then we can have a list of these are the main uh, organizations working towards diseases with the best proven results. This could be malaria. This could be intestinal worms. This could be uh, vitamin A deficit. So very common causes that you can make the biggest possible impact with each of your dollars based on the decision that matters the most to you. So based on your philosophical approach, because it's impossible to say if it's best to save a hundred cows or one human or whatever you want to put there. There is, mm. it's up to, it's subjective. So this is kind of the basic idea around the charity. Was this easy to follow? Yeah, and I think that would really speak to a lot of users that want to find information and more data on how to give effectively. So what is your plan for engaging those who give because they want to experience that feeling of generosity? How do you inspire, how do you speak to people's hearts when it comes to charity, do you think? So that's another approach then that can come from these philosophical questions. You can have a question like, do you want to really see the result of this? Or would you like to maximize the result of this? And there are organizations that are very, very good at showing the results. So this could also be a part then of, of the educational process. If it's very important to you to be able to see the result, maybe you want direct contact with the person who actually wants the money. Maybe you want the handwritten letter to know that it's actually helped someone. There are those organizations out there but they might be hard to find. What would you Google for to know if this is an organization that you will actually see the difference? So that would also be then a part of this where, okay, I want to see exactly where my $500 goes to. And then we can take you to the top list of the organization that show these in the best way and at the same time are as effective as possible. So maybe you will get a picture of the cow they bought. Maybe you will uh, get a letter of how they did this. Maybe you will get to see the medical bill of what they bought for medicines, these kind of things. And there are organizations that do that. So if that's what matters the most to you, to actually be able to see and feel the result, then we want to help you to find those. Awesome, awesome. Um, will great be accepting donations? Let's get back to that question and focus a bit on the on the product thing. I have another thing I would like to add once we're on that. Um, so one of the things we really like on this uh, charity part as well is to 
make it easy to donate money through us, which touches upon what you just asked. So we want to have a place where you can easily say, okay, this is where I want to donate money. You can donate money through great.com, but not to great.com. And we want to do this because we want to make it a lot easier. Right now, if you want to donate money to organization A, they might have a completely different way of doing that than organization B. And you might need to fill out a lot of different information and do a lot of different things, which makes it hard to switch. If we can create one place where you can always donate to us, and then we have already solved all the other things on the other sides. So the money just bounces forward. We don't ever take it. So in that way, we will accept donations. So more or less, we will facilitate uh, donations. We'll make it easier to donate. You will not be able to donate to GREAT as an organization in itself. We will not accept any donations, but we want to educate people how to donate. The reason for this is simply that we want to remain unbiased. We don't want anyone to, to feel that we are giving a decision that we are not standing for. We don't want anyone to question our beliefs or question our honesty. So we don't want anyone to give us money, but we're more than happy to educate where to give and show where we are giving. And in that way, we put our money where our mouth is, basically. So if we believe that malaria is the cause that we want to prevent, we will show that by giving our money. And it's a lot easier to, to stand in that truth and be completely honest with that if you're giving away the organization's money rather than asking for someone else to give their money to us. So if we say, we give our money to malaria, we think you should do that too. To me, that's very much more powerful than it is, hey, we need your money, please give it to us. Mm. It's very different. So no, we will never accept donations to us, but we will facilitate and make the donation flow a lot easier. So you can, in the future, maybe just have an app that says you want to donate a hundred bucks a month and you can in a B, just t tap in a button, you can change which organization you want to give it to each month without needing to fill everything in, without needing to do all of these things mm. and having it connected to the various tools. I think that's a very important thing to lower the difficulty level to do a donation. I also think you touched upon something there that I think is powerful, which is to that we show where we're giving money and then to inspire other people to give publicly. I think there's a huge benefit to giving publicly. How do you see that? So I've donated quite a lot of money over the last couple of years. And I used to be kind of ashamed of it. Like I didn't want to talk about this because I didn't want people to say, oh, Eric is so full of himself. He's only, only donating money to brag. So I didn't tell anyone. I didn't want any exposure. And then I think it was you who told me this actually, who started to challenging this. Is that really true? Does people think that? Does it matter? What positive effects can it come from doing this publicly? And realizing that if I'm telling people that I'm donating and that if I'm telling people how I feel while donating, that can be very inspiring to others. So it actually might, might mean that more people donate money because they feel inspired. They get to learn about these calls. And since once again, then leading by example, I'm showing that I'm donating. Hopefully all of these people are also showing that you're donating. And once again, we get more circles and more ripple effects. So that way, now I'm very, very transparent with what I'm donating to. And I'm very proud of it. And I want to feel proud of it, which makes it even a better feeling of doing it. So if I'm donating money and just telling people I'm doing it, <clears throat> the subtext said he's proud, he's bragging. But if I'm saying, I'm really, really proud of this, I'm donating here. Suddenly it's not bragging because you're kind of honest that that's your intention. At least that's how I feel when I'm doing it, which makes me feel even more inspired to give. So mm. it's, it's all positives of talking about it when being done right. Cool. We're coming up towards the end here. So I have two quick questions for you to finish this off. First. If you had to give away all of your money tomorrow, where would you give it? I would probably give it to Founders Pledge and let them make the decisions going forward. 
So I would give it to someone I trust who can make the decision with more knowledge than I have at this very moment. Cool. And okay, imagine something completely unexpected happen. What was what would the most good for great and unexpected thing that could happen in 10 years? Something just ridiculous. Put on your imagination hat. What's the most unexpected thing that can happen in 10 years that would be very good for great? Yes. Maybe the best and unexpected. Uh, that God exists and mm-hmm. he comes down to earth. He touches on all our problems and immediately solves extreme poverty, all diseases and all communication errors. And great ceases to exist because we don't, we're not, we're not needed anymore. So we we commit company suicide. I knew the aliens were out there. All right, bro. <laughs> good question. A, this was a, this was a good session. I had fun. I had fun too. Enjoy your kickboxing. Thank you. Thai boxing, kickboxing right. is for wusses. All right. All right. <laughs> Have a good one, man. Thank you. Peace. Peace.